So I passed the CompTIA Security Plus exam way back in January of this year and I cannot lie, I did think it would be a little bit of a silver bullet or make it substantially easier to get an entry level role in the cybersecurity industry. Well, <laughs> it's September and apart from a few recruiters in my um, LinkedIn DMs after I did my, oh, I just passed the Security Plus exam, it has not helped me as much as I thought it would. But um, I don't regret getting it because it is something that's often asked as a certification on cybersecurity jobs. But I'm going to need more to get that entry level role. And it might be a little bit harder or a lot harder than I thought it would be because right now, the industry isn't the kindest to tech newbies getting a new role you see all the time with people saying that they're struggling but it's not impossible because as much as i see people talk about how hard it is to get into the industry i see many people talk about oh i'm so excited to say i'm starting this new role or i'm taking a new path and they're starting their journey into cyber security so it is possible it's just going to take a little bit more finesse than i first anticipated but that's okay because we're not afraid of hard work around here. But before I get into the things that I'm doing now to make that career change a little bit easier, let me introduce myself. My name is Kakui and I'm a career changer into cybersecurity from a non-technical field. So that's me. Now, let's get into the things that I'm doing to make this career change more of a reality. The first thing I'm doing is instead of saying I want to get a job in cybersecurity and trying to learn every single skill, I focused on a niche and I focused on a niche that is best for my skill set right now, which is something non-technical. So I'm focusing on governance, risk and compliance or GRC in cybersecurity. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's a non-technical role, which means the level of knowledge I need to have is a little bit less than if I wanted to work as a SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst or any type of analyst. Instead, I want to work in GRC, audit, risk assessment, any of those adjacent roles is what I'm focusing in on and I'm focusing in on learning the knowledge and skills I need for that particular role and then trying to learn everything, which means I can make my scope of work i.e. my scope of learning um, a little bit smaller to hopefully speed up the process of getting that entry level role. So this also means that my job alerts have changed from pretty much almost every cyber security role to specifically GRC, um, auditor, risk assessment, third party risk, anything in that type of role. Which, is me which has also meant that finding jobs to apply to is a little bit easier because I'm not applying to everything and getting disheartened that I don't meet all of the criteria. So I'm focusing on GRC. The second thing I'm doing may be a little bit overkill, but for my personality type and how I learn is really helpful. So I've purchased a number of courses from cybersecurity professionals here on YouTube and I've picked these specific three people because their free content is already incredibly helpful and has helped me um, navigate my career change a, a little better. So I knew that their paid content would also be really helpful. So the three people that I am working through their courses, the first one is Josh Madika. He has the cyber range and it even though it focuses more on the technical skills and I've said that I want to work in GRC which is a non-technical area knowing the technical skills software um, being able to speak the technical language will be incredibly helpful even though I don't want to go into a technical role as of yet I don't think um, but it is a live SOC environment which means that I can have access to a lot of cybersecurity software, which also is something that I could put on my CV. So I'm using Tenable, um, Azure, um, learning how to remediate threats using PowerShell and so much more. But that's the first course I purchased. And then after I realized that, okay, I wanna focus on 
something non-technical, I found Gerald Oja, who is a GRC professional, and he has a GRC course that is extremely practical, and he walks through how to do audits, how to do risk assessments, and talks about best practices that he's found from his ex experience actually in the role. The last course I purchased was Unix Guy's GRC Mastery course and yes there is some overlap with Gerald Oja's GRC course but the reason I bit the bullet and still decided to purchase Unix Guy's course is because his course has an ISO 27001 lead auditor credential which will be a boost to my CV and the two um, courses are taught slightly differently and there is slightly different information so instead of being um, a clash they're, they're, they're actually quite complementary courses so I'm, I am actually very happy that I purchased both courses and I'm working through both and I'm excited to add the portfolio projects to my portfolio as well. The last category of things that I'm doing are free first of all more non-technical but will be extremely helpful for finding the job and potentially passing the interview. So the first thing I'm doing is making sure that I can speak the language of cybersecurity, which will obviously help me during the interview. So I'm listening to two podcasts, two main ones that if you're into cyber cybersecurity at all, you've probably already heard of. Um, but the first one is Darknet Diaries, which is equal parts entertaining and educational. The host does a really good job of translating some of the more technical aspects of what people talk about during the interview into really simple terms that anybody can understand and just having knowledge of some of the crazy things that can happen in cyber, so some of the most insane threat actors, the most insane hackers, um, will also give me something to talk about during interviews. The second podcast I'm listen listening to is Cyberwire Daily. I'm listening to this podcast specifically to be able to answer the interview question, oh, so how do you keep up with cybersecurity news? That podcast. I listen to it every day. It's relatively short. I think the, the longest it normally is, is half an hour. So I normally listen to that on my walk back from the gym. So that's another one that's really helpful for me to be able to talk the language of cybersecurity. And it's actually a very in enjoyable podcast as well. The next thing I'm doing, which can feel a little bit icky, is networking on LinkedIn. And the, the word networking always feels a bit strange to me, but it's something that has to be done. Um, and I know a lot of recruiters can be found on LinkedIn, so I'm trying to make myself a little bit more visible. Um, so I've updated my um, profile page to make it a little bit more searchable. I am connecting with people who already have the role that I want just so that I can be in their, I guess, in their circle. I'm connecting with a lot of technical recruiters, like just general tech and specifically cybersecurity so that, you know, my face and my profile is just a little bit more out there. And the last thing I'm doing in this free category is just practicing interview questions. I've written a long list of interview questions um, based on an entry level GRC role and I'm practicing those pretty regularly even though I don't have any interviews lined up as of yet. When I do, I won't be as panicked because I know I've practiced these interview questions. And normally I just practice sitting in front of my laptop because I'm pretty sure the interview will be a virtual one but I also use um, Google's interview warm-up platform which is actually very helpful so yeah just getting in the reps of being able to present myself well in an interview to hopefully pass that interview and get that offer letter in my inbox so those are the three things I'm doing to make this career change more of a possibility sooner rather than later I've honed in on a niche I've purchased courses and I'm making myself talk the cybersecurity talk. It can feel like a lot sometimes, but I know that the time is gonna pass regardless and it's better for me to at least try to do the things to make that change than just sit on my hands and hope for the best. So that's what I'm doing. My channel will be 
a bit of a mix of things, but it'll be focused on cyber security and technology. If that's something you're interested in, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.